Hello, and welcome to Egan High School. The purpose of today's flip presentation is to review with you some of the different rules and regulations that we at Egan High School in District 196 feel is important. This presentation will not encompass every rule that resides in the student handbook rights and responsibilities that was mailed to your home. However, it will encompass many of the more frequently violated and, and frequently visited rules that we at Egan High School have seen in our past 25 plus years. Like I had mentioned, a copy of the, of the handbook has been mailed to your residence. It also resides on the student webpage at egan.k12.mn.us under the Office Main Office tab. There you can see a full, full list of all of the various rules and regulations and as I had mentioned, this is an in addition to the one that was mailed to your home. As we go through this presentation today, some of the rules I simply will just read to you. They're pretty self-explanatory and just simply making you aware of them we feel is important. Others I may provide you examples for to help maybe clarify what expectations the administrators and teachers here feel you should be able to follow. Verbal, written, or otherwise expressed. Arousing alarm in others through the use of language that is discriminatory, abusive, bullying, threatening, or obscene, including through the use of electronic communication. This rule applies in situations in which students may threaten another student of a possible impending fight. A student may swear um, at another student, invoking a sense of fear in that student. This can be done face-to-face, -face, through other students, or, as it states, through electronic communication, by posting things on Twitter, Facebook, etc. Actions taken by administration in these situations include suspension and possible expulsion if repetition occurs. False alarms or bomb threat. Intentionally giving a false alarm of a fire, bomb, or other emergency notification system, or tampering with any alarms. Action taken by administration, suspension, and or expulsion. Intent to sell, give, or share. Selling, giving, or sharing, or intending to sell, give, or share alcohol, including through the use of electronic communication, where selling, giving, or sharing is prohibited by Minnesota or federal law. It is important to note that within this rule, there is a sub-rule that is located within the Student Rights and Responsibilities Handbook that not only addresses this rule and its, its intended intent, which is to sell, give, or share, but also simply the possession or use of alcohol on school grounds. That rule addresses the possessing or the, the being influenced by the use of alcohol on school grounds. In both situations, first offenses result in a 5 to 10 day suspension with a chemical assessment and eventually could result in expulsion should this behavior continue. Ammunition, mace, or pepper gas possession. Possession of bullets, other projectiles designed to be used in a weapon or material designed to cause pain or injury. Actions taken by administration. 5-day suspension, expulsion if repetition occurs. It should be noted and will be noted at, on later slides that these rules not only apply within the school but also outside of the school on school grounds. Locations such as the bus as well as at the bus stop are examples of where the rules that we address here will also be applied. Arson. Intentional destruction or damage to school or district buildings or property by fire. Action taken by administration, expulsion, and restitution. Aggravated assault. Committing an assault upon another person with a weapon or device used as a weapon or an assault which inflicts great bodily harm upon another person. Action taken by administration, expulsion. On this situation and in this rule, it is important to note the difference between aggravated assault and assault being a physical assault. In this situation, what separates a physical assault from here, an aggravated assault, is the use of the weapon. And that's why we underlined it. Using things like nunchucks or a, a knife or a bow staff or, you know, in extreme situations, a, a gun. Those are things that would, would, as a result, fall under aggravated assault and would also result in us involving uh, the Egan Police Department in this situation. Physical assault. Acting with intent to cause fear in another person of immediate bodily harm or death, or intentionally bullying, inflict inflicting or attempting to inflict bodily harm upon another person. Action taken by administration, five days suspension if action is to another student. Expulsion if repetition occurs. Expulsion if action is towards a staff member. As stated in earlier slides, what separates physical assault from aggravated assault 
Physical assault, you do not have the involvement of a, a deadly or a, a, some sort of a weapon. Physical assault, what separates this, though, from fighting is this involves one combatant. One combatant, maybe one student jumps another student and severely beats them up. The other student really wasn't fighting back. The key for this one is that there is one combatant or one student that is engaging in the fight. Um, and that's what makes this a physical assault versus fighting, which we will get to at a later point. Fighting. Adversarial physical contact in which one or the other parties or both contribute to a situation by verbally instigating a fight and or physical action. Action taken by administration, suspension, or expulsion if repetition occurs. It is as stated before, a fight is different than physical assault because fights are situations in which, which both parties are involved in the fight itself. This could have begun with verbal instigation and then a fight breaks out after. But again, in this situation, there are two combatants. So both individuals are fighting. And as a result, all parties involved will be suspended in this situation. It isn't who threw the first punch or who won the fight, but rather your involvement in it, whether it be both physical, verbal, or just one or the other, that will possibly get you suspended in this situation. Burglary. Entering a building or a specific area of a building without consent and with intent to commit a crime. Or entering a building without consent and committing a crime. Action taken by administration, expulsion and restitution. Inflicting bodily harm. Committing a reckless or negligent act that inflicts bodily harm upon another person. Action taken by administration, detention, three-day suspension or more should the behaviors continue. It should be noted here that when this rule is applied, it does not always mean that the individual intended to harm another classmate. Sometimes it's jokes that maybe went wrong or they were messing around and somebody got hurt. The intent to actually hurt somebody is not here when this rule is applied. And oftentimes there was no intent. It was an accident. However, the individual is hurt and the rule must be applied nonetheless. Chemicals. Intent to sell, give, or share. This rule is separate in the student handbook than the alcohol rule that we reviewed earlier. However, it should be noted that basically the two, two rules are really, for the most part, pretty similar. However, they do basically hold two separate, separate markers in the actual student handbook, so you can review that for, for full details on both rules. However, uh, if we get to this rule, selling, giving, or sharing chemicals or drug paraphernalia, it should be noted right away that just simply sharing it, it does not does not have to be sold. So having drug paraphernalia or drugs and sharing it or giving it to a friend does count as distribution. It doesn't necessarily have to mean an exchange of money to be construed as distribution. Just giving it to another student is distribution. Um, or intending to sell, give, or share, uh, including through electronic communications. This includes but is not limited to narcotics, controlled substances, or items believed to be narcotics or controlled substances. If I try and pass off something as a drug, even though it may not actually be a drug, my, my intention is for it to appear as though it is a drug, it would fall under this rule um, because it is believed to be a, a narcotic or a con controlled substance. Uh, prescription drugs, over-the-counter medications to be used for the purpose of mood alteration, and any synthetic marijuana and any related derivatives of synthetics. For purpose of this section, drug paraphernalia means items prohibited by Minnesota or federal law that are used for, for consumption or manufacturing of drugs. Once again, similar to the alcohol, uh, there is a secondary rule in the student handbook that not only addresses the intent to sell, give, or share, but also the secondary portion of it, which is just simply the possession or the being under the influence or attempted possession or use of drugs as well. In these situations, the intent to distribute uh, will result in expulsion. Um, the, in, the possession uh, under the influence or attempted possession or use will result in a 5 to 10 day suspension with a chemical assessment or a, a 10 day suspension um, or expulsion overall. Um, so it really varies if there is intent to actually distribute or if there is just possession um, or use or being under the influence when uh, this rule is applied. Damage of property vandalism. Defacing, cutting, or otherwise damaging property that belongs to, to the school, district, or other students, employees, or others. Actions taken by administration, suspension, uh, expulsion if repetition occurs, restitution applies to each offense. Once again, as, as referenced earlier, uh, the school bus is just an extension of the school and of school rules. So cutting seats on school buses, 
um, defacing or vandalism on a school bus or at a school bus stop, this rule would apply in that situation as well. Dress code. Clothing may not include words or visuals which are lewd, obscene, disruptive, abusive, or discriminatory, or which advertise drugs, alcohol, or tobacco. Uh, other things to note here is, you know, we want you to have shoes on at all times, and that's just a health concern and a health issue for cleanliness. Uh, also, I understand during the holidays, like Halloween, uh, you want to wear face masks and you want to dress up. Um, you can't. We need to be able to see your face at all times. That's a security measure more than anything. We need to be able to see who you are um, and at least be able to recognize and see your face. Actions taken by administrators, uh, warning, and uh, obviously you must change your clothes after the first offense and possible suspension if repetition or if there's repeated offenses. Driving carelessly or recklessly, uh, driving on school property in such a manner as to endanger persons or property. Basically, guys, in this one, the student lot is a place where you're parking your car. We want to be sure it's safe. We want to be sure that you take care of each other. We understand that you have a car and it's really nice and it goes fast, but let's not see it in the lot. We want to be sure that we're safe at all times. Uh, we can pull your permit. We can suspend you. And if the repetition occurs and if the behavior continues, possible expulsion. Next, we have two rules that are seen as somewhat similar, except one does definitely have a much, much more serious initial consequence. Explosives, uh, possessing or using any compound or mixture, the primary or common purpose of which is to function by explosion with substantially instantaneous release of gas and heat. And this carries in, in, in action by the administration of expulsion. Uh, similar to this rule is fireworks and possession or use of fireworks. Uh, you can't possess any fireworks, you can't have them, you can't obviously use them in school. Anything that produces a loud sound or the visible effect uh, will fall under this and uh, could result in a suspension or an expulsion if the repetition occurs. Gambling. Playing a game of chance for stakes. Action taken by administration. Warning on first offense. Possible of suspensions and eventual expulsion if repetition occurs. Harassment. Things to note before I get into the actual rule of harassment is that one of the, th the things with harassment is that it's in the eye of the beholder. So in situations where an individual feels they are being harassed, the individual or the harasser oftentimes will feel that they have not harassed another student. Again, it's the student who is receiving the harassment. And if they feel that it is in fact harassment in that situation, this rule will be applied. Uh, so always tread lightly with this. When you're looking at a situation, think, what would a reasonable person think? Would a reasonable person, an adult, feel that what I'm about to do be a harassment? Not yourself, but a reasonable person. With that being said, harassment in the district and at Egan High School is viewed as participating in or conspiring with others to engage in acts that injure, bully, degrade, intimidate, or disgrace other individuals, including indecent exposure, displaying pornography, and harassing words or actions that negatively impact on an individual or group because of their characteristics, including through the use of electronic communication. Um, sending video text and picture text, etc. Um, harassment based upon an individual or group sex, race, color, creed, religion, disability, national origin, marital status, age, sexual orientation, or public assistance status shall also be handled in accordance with the Minnesota State Statute 503.4 AR, harassment, discrimination, violent, or hazing by a student, uh, which is on file with the district office. Hazing. Committing an act against a student or coercing a student into committing an act that creates a substantial risk of harm or holds a student up to ridicule in order for the student to be initiated into or affiliated with a student organization, group, or club. Actions taken by administrator, suspension, then expulsion if repetition occurs. Insubordination. Insubordination basically is a a lack of willingness or refusal to follow a, a pretty basic, easy direction or directive um, that is given by a staff member. Staff members include teachers, secretaries, substitutes, administrators, bus drivers, custodians, etc. When they ask students to do a very basic task, what's your name? Can you follow me to the, to the main office? Uh, can you stop doing that, please? Maybe it's something in the hallway. They don't have to be your teacher. They are a staff member, and you must follow and, and listen to them. We're good people here at Egan High School. We listen to each other. Uh, we follow basic directions. And a lack of following basic directions is viewed as insubordination. And you can see the actions that can be taken by administration below.
Incendiary devices. Unauthorized possession or igniting of matches, lighters, or other devices that produce flames. It should also be noted again that in the student handbook uh, that igniting combustibles, um, whether it be intentionally igniting combustibles, liquids, or other items that cause a disruption or an unsafe environment also fall within this rule and result in suspension and eventual possible expulsion should the behavior continue. Nuisance devices. Causing a nuisance with objects that cause distractions such as headphones, laser pointers, digital recordings, and or sharing of those recordings without staff permission is prohibited. Please note here that the use of a camera is prohibited without staff permission and actions taken by administration would be detention, uh, suspension on a second offense. Um, things that have been included in the past, things like radios, uh, as stated, uh, laser pointers, Cell phones vary by class and for the purpose of the class, um, but can be viewed as possible nuisance devices. Pornography. Possessing, creating, or accessing sexually explicit material, including sexting or through the use of other electronic communication. Please note on this rule that possessing any images that are inappropriate on your phone and then forwarding them to other students could result in this rule being applied to you even though maybe an individual willingly sent those images to you, redistributing those images could be seen as, as using the electronic communication to further pornographic images uh, throughout the building and throughout the school. Actions taken by administration, possible detention, suspension on the second offense. Record or identification falsification. Most frequently we see this rule applied when students forge parents' names on notes or passes to get out of school, like a doctor's note, and they sign their own parents' name on permission slips, on things of that nature. Uh, but understand that possible action by, by an administrator could be detention or a suspension for a second offense. So be sure when needed, you get the proper signatures. Don't falsify any information. Robbery or extortion. Obtaining property from another person where his or her consent was induced by use of force, threat of force, or under false pretense, including through the use of electronic communication. Simply stealing something or taking something from a person, or taking something from a person um, where they give it to you, however, the reason that they give it to you is you basically extort them or you threaten to hurt them or do something to them should they not give it to you. Um, is not allowed. Actions taken by administration, five-day suspension with restitution or possible expulsion if that, uh, that, that behavior continues. Theft or knowingly receiving or possessing stolen property. Basically taking another person's items, having stolen items, even an individual who knows somebody stole something, maybe a friend says, can you hold this for me? Holding that item for an individual when you know that it was stolen, you may not have stole it yourself, but a friend did and you're holding it for them, you are knowingly receiving stolen property. We understand you didn't do it. However, you are helping that crime to be committed and you are preventing justice from being upheld in this situation by possessing that stolen property. You're looking at three to five days suspension with restitution, impossible expulsion, and restitution if repetition occurs. Tobacco. Possessing, using, selling, giving, or sharing tobacco, liquid or electronic cigarettes in district buildings, on district grounds, in district vehicles, or at district events. That means at a football game. That means out on the football fields or on the soccer fields. That means in the wooded areas on the school grounds. It means anywhere on school property, on a bus, at a bus stop. All of those areas are seen as district property. We are a tobacco-free school, and the actions taken by administration begin with suspension. Trespassing, being present in any district facility or portion of a facility when it's closed to the public or when the student does not have the authorization to be there. Understand that oftentimes after the school day is over, we'll ask individuals or students at a certain point that they need to leave the building. At that point, if they're in an unauthorized area that they have already been asked to leave, they will be given a warning. Further warnings may result in being cited with trespassing from the city of Egan, which means further or future incidents of being in areas on district property that they're not supposed to will incite tickets actually from the City of Egan's Police Department. Additional actions that can also be taken by administration beyond being cited for trespassing is suspension. Understand that as you graduate, this can also in that situation then once again be brought back up. You are no longer, once you graduate, a student of Egan High School. If you do choose to come back to visit, you need to go through the correct protocol at the correct time of day. It doesn't mean you show up in the middle of the day. You go through the front desk. They may or may not say this is an appropriate time for you to be here. 
Um, or they may say, it's okay, sign in, here's a visitor's badge, badge, et cetera. You need to go through that protocol to avoid being your visit being seen as trespassing once you graduate and move beyond Egan High School. Weapon or lookalike weapon possession. Now, because of the severity of this and because of the prevalence of this in the media um, and in, in America today, I want to read this directly from the student handbook to avoid any confusion. Uh, possessing any firearm, whether loaded or unloaded, or any device intended to look like a firearm. Any knife, any device or instrument designed as a weapon and capable of producing severe bodily harm, or intended to look like a device or instrument capable of producing severe bodily harm, or any other device, instrument or substance which in the manner in which it is used or intended to be used is calculated or likely to pr produce severe bodily harm, or looks like it is calculated or likely to produce severe bodily harm. Weapon or lookalike weapon possession is expulsion. Uh, obviously, we take this very seriously um, and understand that an intent does not need to exist for this rule to be applied. Leaving the building. Uh, it's important to note, guys, that once the school day is going on, unless you have direct permission from the office, um, from a parent, and you have gone through the office to properly obtain a pass to leave the building, you're not permitted to leave. You can't just say you feel ill and then get up and leave, go get in your car and drive away. Uh, you always have to have a permit to leave the building during the school day. We want to know where you are. Um, we want to be sure that you are safe. If you choose to just obviously leave the building without going through that protocol, action taken by administration is detention. It's a liability for us. Your parents send you here for us to take care of you and educate you, and we need to know where you are. And if you are not here, we need to at least know where you are supposed to be in those instances. Technology related. The technology related rule within the student handbook has numerous different pieces to it. So I'm just going to really quickly summarize a majority of them. First off, uh, and again, they're going to carry various, various disciplines and consequences, everything from a de de detention and a warning to a suspension and an eventual possible expulsion in extreme cases. Uh, but first off, non-school use of technology is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, next up, unauthorized adding or altering of hardware on a workstation or server um, or damaging of property in the process of attempting to do so. Um, next up, uh, possession of obscene, vulgar, or ex ex sexually explicit material using technology. Um, and we addressed a lot of these in the pornography uh, rule that we discussed earlier, including things like sexting or through the use of any electronic communication or device. Um, any unauthorized access or activity in a secure area of computer or network uh, through the use of the electronic communication or device. Um, any violation to the acceptable use of information technology. Um, and then a kind of a bigger part of this is the cyberbullying, um, which is inappropriate use of technology such as but not limited to personal websites or web pages where other students and or staff members are verbally abused, uh, verbally assaulted, bullied, defamed, threatened, harassed, or terrorized. And the conduct impacts the ability of the school to maintain order and discipline including through the use of other various electronic communications. Discipline may result uh, basically whether the conduct takes place from a person, personal or school computer or any other electronic device or during or after school hours. Students may also be disciplined under other qualifying categories um, as we've discussed before. So because, just because you bully a person um, electronically from home, um, outside of the school day on the weekends or using your phone does not excuse that behavior and it would fall under the cyberbullying portion of the technology related uh, rules which is in the student handbook. Bullying. Bullying has been in the news quite frequently and has been addressed at, at the state capitol in St. Paul and there's current laws and statutes on the books regarding bullying. Um, the district stance on is that we abide by all of the statutes that have been laid out by the, the capitol and by the, the state of Minnesota. Bullying is subject to discipline under a lot of the categories that we have already discussed. Um, but is not limited to you know, the verbal abuse, the physical abuse, um, the various assaults that we addressed, harassment, cyberbullying, um, or through the use of other, other electronic communication. Um, the discipline that would be incurred would be the discipline that the, the action actually fell within. So was it cyberbullying? Then that discipline would be, would be abided by. Is it the harassment? Then that discipline would be uh, abided by. But bullying in this case is just kind of an umbrella term for a lot of the things that we have discussed already. And again, we just follow the Minnesota statute uh, based on that. 
School transportation. A couple things to note with school transportation. Uh, number one, all school rules apply on the bus. They apply at the bus stop. Your school day actually begins not when you enter the building, but if you ride the bus in the morning, when you get to your bus stop, the school rules apply. If you are seen smoking at the bus stop, school rules apply. If you get in a fight at the bus stop, school rules apply. You get the point. Uh, that school day will continue all the way through the end of the day when you are walking away from the bus stop. So it's important that you really understand that, that all of the rules we visited that are in the Student Rights and Responsibility Handbook apply when you're on the bus and at the stop as well as on any school grounds. It is also important to understand that riding the school bus is not a right. It's a privilege. And the school district does reserve the right to take that privilege away. If you are not following school rules on the bus or at the bus stop, they do not have to provide you transportation. So it's important for you to understand that. In addition, obviously there's no eating or drinking on the bus. You can't tamper with any of the safety equipment on the bus. No throwing uh, or shooting or spraying objects or propellants out of the bus or on the bus. Um, no use of, of nuisance devices on the bus. And there's uh, several other rules that are located in the, the student handbook, which once again were, were, was mailed to your home and is located online as well. Uh, action taken by administration, it depends on the type of infraction, but in the end, they could suspend you, they could expel you, they could simply you know, just take away your right to ride that bus. We felt that it was important to address uh, another issue, even though it's not necessarily a rule, but to make sure that everyone was aware um, that when you are on school grounds, again, the bus, the bus stop, or, or the school itself, uh, you, you may be asked to be searched by an administrator. A Minnesota state statute gives administrators that authority to search you, um, provided, however, reasonable suspicion exists. Now, that is a lesser level of standard than probable cause, which is needed by a, a police officer. So on a school grounds, it actually takes less proof for us to search you than if a police officer were to need to search you um, out in public. We may search your backpack, we may search your locker, your cell phone, your car, your person, asking you to turn your pockets inside out, take your shoes off, take your socks off, uh, just being sure that you don't have any drugs or weapons or anything like that for safety. Um, understand if you refuse to consent to a search, the school official may still conduct that search as long as there is reasonable suspicion to justify it. Uh, so again, we want to be sure that school is a safe place. You have to come here. And as a result, because you are forced to be here, there is a higher level of safety that needs to be assured to other students. And as a result, a greater level of leeway is given to administrators and staff members to search students should they deem it necessary and should reasonable suspicion exist. Finally, the last thing that we need to talk about today is an attendance policy that District 196 has developed. It's important that everybody listens up really closely to this one because potentially this could affect your ability to earn credit in classes. District 196 attendance policy. Chronic absenteeism is defined as missing more than 10% of school days for any reason. At EHS, this is equal to six days per trimester or a total of 18 days over the course of a year. School attendance is important for both academic and social development. Students are absent from school at this rate, the 10% rate, miss out on the valuable learning activities that take place in the classroom, both with teachers and with their peers. While that student who is absent may complete some or even all of their missed work, the learning experience is greatly altered uh, overall. We understand that there may be circumstances that prevent students from attending. However, we expect those absences to be limited. As a result, District 196 has developed an attendance policy this attendance policy looks as such. After six absences, a warning letter will be generated by the school and sent to the student's home. The letter notifies the student and their family of their chronic absenteeism. If the absenteeism continues at the point of 10 absences in any given trimester, a second letter will be sent home. This letter requests a meeting to be organized. The intervention meeting with parents, students, and administrators, and based on the situation, other individuals like counselors or case managers may also be invited. At that meeting, the stakeholders will come to an agreement and will create and sign a contract that will focus on improved attendance moving forward. Additionally, individuals who have reached the 10 absences mark will not earn a credit in any courses with which they have had 10 absences at the end of the trimester. They will receive a DC or a delayed credit. Now, moving forward, if they abide by the contract created at the intervention meeting, they will eventually receive the grade that they had earned that trimester. However, if they violate that contract, 
they will not earn their grade and that DC or delayed credit will become an NC or no credit, meaning that they will need to take summer school or attend Egan Academy to obtain that credit. So what this means is if I'm a student and I'm absent six times in a trimester, a letter is going to be sent to my family and to my, my house notifying my family of my absenteeism. However, if after receiving that letter, my absenteeism continues, at the point of 10 absences, my parents are going to get another letter. And they're going to have to come in. I'm going to have to come in. I'm going to have to sit down with an administrator, possibly my counselor, and we're going to develop a plan of why I can't get to school. Secondly, at the end of the trimester, if I, was, if I had 11 absences to first hour, which was my math class, I'm not going to get a, the grade that I earned in my math class on my transcript. So if I had a B at the end of the trimester, I'm not going to get my B. I'm going to get a DC, or a delayed credit. Now, if I follow the contract that is agreed to at uh, my intervention meeting, I'm eventually going to get that B on my transcript for my first hour math class. However, if I don't and I violate the contract that was set up at the intervention meeting, that B that I had in my math class is going to become an NC, and I'm going to have to make that math class up in either summer school or Egan Academy. So this is the process that was laid out and developed by District 196 and will be used in all high schools. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you. I know that this is long. It isn't exciting. There's a lot of other things we'd rather be doing. But here at the first day, uh, we want to be sure that everybody gets all the rules and gets all the information that they need so everybody starts out on the same level playing field. Uh, we have our three administrators here that primarily deal with behavior, Mr. Jamison, Ms. Hedlund, and Mr. Thompson. They want to see you for good things, not for bad things. With that being said, if you need something, they are a great resource to go to if you have a question. If you're encountering something, they, they definitely can help you out. Again, we hate to start off this way, but we just want to get everybody the information. We want to officially welcome you here to Egan High School. We're happy you're here. We're happy you're a Wildcat. We got high expectations, and that's because you guys are great kids. So have a great year, and thank you.